This video is on how to incubate goose eggs. What I have here is a small collection of pilgrim goose eggs and I'm just going to go over some of the basics on how to incubate them uh, and in comparison to chicken eggs. Now goose eggs are much harder to incubate. There's a little more details uh, to it. You can't just put them in and forget about them. Um, you have to do various things. So to start out, um, when the goose lays an egg, I uh, collect them and you can see here I put a number on them, that's nine. And I also um, put the date. So this one was laid on March 12th, 2022. And on one side I put a, an O and the other side an X. This is so when I turn the eggs, um, I either put the X up or the O up. And goose eggs need to be turned um, three times a day, about, eight, about every eight hours, you know, to be uh, reason, it's re reasonably good. So what I have here is a chart that I make up and um, over here I have uh, each egg when it's laid, the date that it was laid, and approximate time when it was laid. Sometimes I actually see the goose come off the nest, you know, and I, I go in there, oh, there's an egg. So generally, you know, I know about when they laid them. Um, sometimes I come out to the um, gaggle house in the morning and there's already eggs in the nest. So I just kind of estimate. Okay, and then I have the date when I put them in the incubator and my estimated hatch date and a column here whether they're fertile or not and then um, if I know which uh, goose lays the egg I log that. I have Speckles and Tina are my two females. Honk is my male. Okay so then I build a chart up to 35 days because that's about 30 to 35 days how long it takes to hatch. Now they're interesting because they can start hatching, say, for example, 30 days, and it may take days for that guy to come out of the egg. It could take up to three or four days. Okay, so um, I just build this chart, and then these are the times, 10 o'clock, 6 p.m., and 2 a.m., when I rotate uh, my eggs. Okay, so I just make this chart so it's real easy to follow in, in case I get lost, because that has happened. I come down, I rotate the eggs, and a lot of times I'll check them uh, for fertility, see how they're doing with the flashlight, and then I'm like, oh wait, did I rotate those eggs? But so now I always have this chart, so it's really easy. I just check the date and the time and say, okay, I should have like an O facing up. And uh, if I don't, oh, I didn't rotate them, so I, you know, correct it. So this helps me keep track. So, um... In fact, I'll be turning the eggs shortly. Uh, this is the 12th, I think. And the last time I moved them, so X was up. And at 2 in the morning, I will make it an O that's up. Okay? So that's one thing is um, they have to be turned. Okay? But now, um, how do you do it? Well, this is uh, the incubator I have. I got this from um, Tractor Supply about maybe four or five years ago. Um, I started out hatching guinea eggs, and uh, I had about a 65% hatch rate. And now I tried some duck eggs, and uh, I only had one hatch from that bunch. Those were shipped through the mail, and um, I lost a lot in shipping on those. Um, I've also done quail and uh, now last year was the first time I did goose eggs and I shipped those through the mail well they were shipped to me I had a dozen of them and uh, ten of those hatched um, none of the eggs were broken in the mail they were packaged extremely well and um, so when I ship out eggs I package them the same way so um, now you see here the egg turner that's in the bottom of this incubator here. I just leave, use that as a shelf 
Um, I don't actually turn the eggs with it. Um, they don't fit in the turner, basically. So, of course, those are all done um, individually, manually. Now, up there, you'll see there's a, a um, sponge, and I keep that for humidity. And then inside, um, I have a, a temperature and a humidity uh, meter here. And I have one over there. Now you notice this one here says 95.2 and this one was 99.0 and the controller itself says it's 99.5. Um, what you'll find with most incubators, these, these low cost budget ones, is the temperature is not very consistent throughout the incubator. Now these um, two thermometers are actually pretty close. Um, I bought them uh, on Amazon in a box of two and they were actually matched pretty well. Um, so when it says that uh, this site here is 99 and that site is 95, there really is a four degree temperature difference. Well, that's not really very good at all, okay? But that's the function of this uh, incubator. <clears throat> so there's things you, you do then where you don't necessarily have to do it with chicken eggs is you need to kind of even out the incubation temperature uh, time product, if you want to call it that. Um, so what happens is um, as the egg is uh, growing, the, as the gosling is maturing, you'll notice that the temperature of the egg, when you touch it with your hand, some are warmer than others. In fact, some get really warm and you're like, wow, is that like too hot? Because it's quite warm to the touch. It's not too hot to touch, but I mean, it's noticeably warmer, degrees warmer than other ones. And then if the egg dies, you'll notice, wow, that egg is cool. It's noticeably cooler than the other eggs. So you can sort of use that as a gauge. But so what I do is when I go through um, every eight hours when I go to rotate the eggs, I'll put my hand, fingers on each egg and check the temperature. If the egg seems normal, warmer than average, I'll move it on the cold side of the incubator. If it seems colder than average, I'll move it to the warm side of the incubator. And I have to um, move these quite often because um, they'll they warm and uh, cool, you know, and it's uh, it's noticeable. So yeah, I'm always trying to keep them even. You know, I'm trying to you know. If it's a little cold, I want it. If the egg feels a little cooler, I want it a little warmer. If it's too warm, I want it a little cooler. So I'm always moving the eggs. You don't have to do that with chicken eggs and guinea eggs. You just don't have to. Get um, geese to, you know, if you really want to, um, you know, have a good hatch, you want to do everything you can. Now, another thing I, I failed to mention too is if you notice. Um, I did not wash the eggs, okay? So when an egg comes out of the hen, it has a coating on it, which is um, some type of antibacterial uh, protective film. And uh, that's why the eggs don't rot as they sit at 99 and a half degrees, which is the incubation temperature, by the way, uh, for uh, over a month. It's because of this uh, bacterial barrier. Well, if you wash the egg, you're going to wash off that, that barrier. Now, some people do wash their eggs and um, they have um, fair, decent, decent results. Um, I do not wash them because I want that barrier. But what I do, though, is I try to uh, brush off the egg if like, because there'll be some, you know, goop, <laughs> goop, goose manure on, um, on the eggs when you when you pick it up out of the nest there'll be some stuff on it you know some mud you know like for example you can see it right here on this one right so you want to try to clean it off the best you can but you don't want to remove that barrier so um, that's uh, another thing like I said some people will wash the eggs um, but I I don't do that and I've had good success uh, without washing them. In fact, um, the last, the first time I did the goose eggs was a year ago. I ordered a dozen eggs, and all of them were alive up until the last week. 
inside the egg, and then two of them died. Um, but all the other ten, um, they hatched hatched out pretty good. So now, humidity. So I mentioned the temperature. You got to you really set it for ninety nine and a half. And while you're doing this egg hatching uh, through the course of the month, you want to keep the humidity around 50, 55, maybe 60 percent. And, um, you know, you, I regulate that with the sponge. Some of these incubators have trays underneath that you can fill with water. Um, I don't particularly care for those. Uh, I have way better control with the sponge but um, depends on the incubator. Uh, let's see, what else am I gonna mention? Okay, um, another thing they recommend in the literature that I find interesting is to spray the eggs uh, once a day with water uh, once they get to be about two weeks in the incubator. and. Now you got to be careful on this because uh, what you're basically trying to do is uh, mimic the, the goose. The, the goose every day goes out and takes a bath in the water and then they come back and they sit on their eggs. So that, that water actually brings in uh, extra humidity and um, supposedly the water then uh, seeps through the shell a little bit and moistens that um, membrane that wraps around the egg. and um, if you don't uh, spray them, then that can dry out and it can have a very difficult time uh, hatching. Now, the 10 that I did have hatch, only three of them were able to hatch on their own. The, um, the remaining seven, uh, I ended up having to help them out of their shell because that membrane had started to dry and uh, there was just, uh, just not enough humidity. And I um, kept the humidity up around, um, I think it was 80, 80%, uh, 75-80%, which was supposed to be about good for geese, but I found that I really had to keep it way higher than that, like as high as I could get it, basically. Um, and at least that's what I'm going to um, do with this, um, this uh, batch. Now, um, the person that I bought the eggs from, he also was having some difficulty with um, them not hatching completely. And I told him uh, what I found is that they're, they're just not getting enough, didn't, didn't have enough moisture. So um, the last um, week or two on his last hatch, he um, put in extra water, he sprayed, him, sprayed the eggs. And um, he had a much better hatch uh, than he was having. So that humidity is extremely important. Of course, you always hear about um, lockdown, where you, um, lock, you know, once uh, you put them in the hatcher, um, you, you know, don't don't open it up and everything. But you got to keep that humidity up there because I had it up there, which should have been good, and it really wasn't. So now about spraying the eggs. So I have here this uh, spray bottle which I put water in it. Now, um, here's the thing with this. A lot of people will take just a small little sprayer, you know, about yay big or whatever, and they'll keep it right inside the incubator, thinking that, well, that'll be a nice warm water, so when I spray the egg, um, that'll be the best thing for it. Um, which is true, you wanna spray it with warm water, and the reason is, the inside of the egg is very warm, right? It's 99 and a half degrees. In reality, it's warmer because, as I mentioned earlier, as they're growing, they generate heat. So those eggs will actually be warmer than the air temperature. So what happens is if you spray it with cold water, what's going to happen? The inside of the egg is going to start to cool right under the shell, and it's going to form almost like a vacuum and suck in that water right into the egg okay well that's gonna has the potential to bring in bacteria because the eggs um, are porous um, so you got to be careful with that a lot of people will just spray them with the warm water 
you know, based at 99 and a half degrees. Now, if you think that through, think physics through on this, you realize if I have water, a water bottle that's 99 and a half degrees and I spray it, it's going to cool down quite a bit before it even hits that egg. Because that's just how physics works when you're spraying things, they cool down like that. So what I do is, oh, another reason I, I don't keep the um, spray bottle inside is I don't want that water sitting at 30 uh, or 99 and a half degrees for 30 days, 35 days, okay? Um, I want fresh water. I don't want bacteria growing in that water and causing me problems. So what I do is I, um, every time I go to spray them, I run hot water in the sink, um, basically as hot as I can um, get, which mine is, my hot water heater isn't turned up extremely hot. So if you have 120, which I think is a maximum for hot water heater, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, um, that might be too hot. But in any event, I put, I fill it up with hot water and then um, I run it through the sprayer onto my hand until I, you know, feel warm water coming out. Okay, because the first, the first few squirts, of course, it's going to cool as it runs through the, the draw hose and out the nozzle. So once I'm sure, okay, I'm spraying out warm water, then I spray the eggs with the warm water. Okay? And um, so that's, um, that's pretty much, I think, the incubation process. You want to keep the humidity up 50 to 60% um, throughout uh, the 30 days. Oh, okay. So usually like around 28 to 30 days, what you do is you'll take the eggs out of the incubator and you'll stop turning them um, because the goose is ready to hatch pretty quick and if you keep turning them they're going to get disoriented and have problems getting out so you take them out of the incubator and you put them in a hatcher which i have is just another incubator um, that uh, i put them in when they're ready to hatch now i could use this same box that i have here however if you have eggs that were put in at different times, they're not going to be ready to uh, go into the hatching phase uh, all in uniform. Okay, some were going to be days later, whatever. So when they're ready to go in the um, hatcher, I move them over into the other incubator. Now in that one, of course, you run the humidity much higher. Like go, go for like 90, 95%. You know, try to keep it moist. Okay, and um, that's actually hard to keep the moisture up that high. Okay, so you may need to get some sponges and different things. Um, I've used paper towels in the past, um, different things to keep that moisture up. And of course, once they're in there, you don't, you don't want to open that um, lid um, until they hatch. Unless, of course, you notice that you have an issue. Okay, and that's what happened to me last time, last year is I had a gosling that was um, highly stressed. I could tell she was stressed. It was a she, by the way. Um, so I could tell, I could, all of a sudden she started like really crying out. So I'm like, wow, what's going on here? So um, I, I opened it up and I, I pulled out the egg and I started looking at it and I realized, wow, she's dry in there. You know, she's like stuck. So I started um, breaking the egg off, breaking the eggshell off around her. Now, when you do that, if you've done guineas or um, ducks or any other thing, you, you realize if you're going to help something out of the eggshell, you have to be very, very careful. If you see blood, like it's bleeding, you got to stop. You got to stop immediately. You're going to kill it. Okay? It's not ready to come out. But in this case, the goose was definitely ready to come out. And... Um, <clears throat> I started taking her out, and I did, I did get her out okay, and uh, she had the membrane stuck to her wings. I literally had to uh, use warm water to get her, her unstuck because she, she was so wrapped up in the, in the membrane. She was very dry, very dry. So got her on her way. Now, at, that, at this point, I think it was two or three of them had already hatched, and uh, she was the next one to go. So I started looking at the other eggs and realized, wow, these guys are all dry. 
So I started um, helping them out one at a time. And uh, some of them, they weren't quite ready to come out yet. So I had to stop and put those back in the hatcher and, um, you know, work on, uh, work on ones that were ready. So um, I, got, I got them all out um, successfully and uh, in the hatcher, let them recuperate for a little bit, you know, and uh, then moved them under um, a heat lamp in a, a little brooder um, box, which I have, which was just a black um, tote um, container, like, like 47, 45 gallon tote container, something like that, that I got from uh, Home Depot for like seven or eight bucks. It was cheap. So that worked really good. I put um, uh, wood shavings, pine shavings in the bottom. Um, you can use different things. Some people uh, use a screen, um, which is probably a little better for them to walk on. Um, but I used uh, pine shavings, had decent success with that. Um, you know, give them some uh, water. And um, the, the food, interesting thing about geese is you don't feed them any kind of a mash because it plugs up their nose and their mouths and they have issues with that. So you get, um, <clears throat> I just went to Tractor Supply and got uh, duck food, which is actually pellets. You know, and you look at that, if, you, if you've had chicks or um, guineas and you, were, you hatched them, you think, wow, how is a goose gonna eat this pellet? This pellet looks huge. You know, compared to like a mash, geese they have no problem with it. The little little goslings have no issues uh, eating the duck pellets, and um, that works really well. They they love it, so they like their water and their and their pellets. Um, let's see what else I want to talk about. So. Yeah, the big things are the temperature and the humidity, which all, which uh, really is the case with all eggs that you incubate. So you want um, normally 50 to 60 percent throughout the first 28 or so days, and then you um, up the humidity when you go to put it in the hatcher. Um, now, some people um, lower the temperature uh, a little bit um, in the hatcher. I didn't really uh, lower it on its on its own. It just tended to be tended to be a little bit lower. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's super critical. The humidity is is definitely critical. Um, so you got to know your incubator. As I mentioned, over here I got ninety eight point eight now, and over here I got ninety five. And the sensor for the regu temperature regulator here is 99.5, which is what it's set for, 99.5. So um, you really got to know where are the hot spots, where are the cold spots, get an idea of it, and then adjust your eggs accordingly. Move them around. You know, don't be afraid to move them. Um, I, when I did the guineas, I never moved them. I didn't really get into the temperature varia variations like I did with the geese because I learned or read in different things that geese, goose eggs are much harder to hatch than your typical egg. And a lot of that is due to the, to the temperature and the humidity. Now, um, I was actually surprised to find out that the, the temperature of the egg increases quite substantially while it's hatching, or while it's growing, rather. Um, so, you know, that I use that along with knowing the temperature of my box, uh, where to place the egg. Um, let's see. What else? That's about it. That's about it. Now, um, in this, okay, so let me just talk a little bit about um, the eggs and how to. Um, look at them with the uh, flashlight so you can tell how far they're, they've developed. So to do that I have to turn off these lights. Okay and I'm going to remove the lid. So bear with me here. Okay 
So now um, all these eggs, here's a, oh, let me just show you. This is a little flashlight, little pin flashlight I have. All right, you can see that? Um, so all these eggs have a date on it. And um, that's March 1st. That's the first one that, that was laid. Now this egg, you, what you do is you put the flashlight right on the end and you can see it. Now this egg, while it's doing something, I'm just not convinced it's, it's quite it's right. In fact, I know it's not right. Um, this egg should be farther along than it is for the age that it is. This is the 12th, so it's been in here about 11 days. It should be much farther along. Now this egg here, wait, is it this egg? Yes. Okay, this one was on March 3rd. This one um, was the second egg. Actually, they're from the same goose. Speckles laid both of these eggs. Okay, now this one is uh, much farther along, much farther, and it's um, a younger egg by two days. Now you can see the embryo right there under the X, barely. Can't see it too well. Okay, yeah, not really. Wait, there's, um, let me see if we can do it. The, those are veins throughout the yolk. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of hard to hold this. See the embryo bobbing around when I turn the egg? Yeah. Okay, so that's the second egg. Uh, so let's see, that was the third. So that's nine days, nine days. Let me see, this one was the seventh. Eighth. Eighth, okay. So this one here on the seventh, uh, that, that one you can see pretty good. Okay, so that's the embryo right there by the X, the little red, red dot. And I don't know if you can see how well you can see it, but there are some veins in there. I can't see too well. Okay. Now, Tina, she laid two eggs in one day, which is very unusual for a goose, but not unusual for the first time they're laying an egg. So this is one of her eggs. And I think it's fertile, but it's only it's only been four days. Usually they say to look at the egg after like seven days. But I believe this one's fertile. And I believe this one's fertile. So we're going to see how those turn out. I didn't really expect much from either one of these eggs because usually you get an egg every two days. And if you're getting two in one day, well, it's probably a weak egg. So, let me just show you this one again. Maybe I can get, get it better this time. This is the oldest one in there that, that looks good. Can't, really difficult, but okay. All right. So, um, Speckles, her eggs, which one is this again? Seven, yeah. Her eggs are this one, this one, and this one, and Tina's are these two back here that she laid in one, one day. All right, so let me turn the light back on. Okay, so that's how you um, candle them, but it's a little easier when you use both hands. Now, um, something else they're going to say about that okay so typically they say <clears throat> to candle them um, at after seven days um, I usually can't wait seven days and from doing the guineas I've quickly realized that I could actually tell if it was fertile by about day three um, sometimes you know not quite sure but if they're gonna, if they're fertile and they're doing and well, doing well, usually you'll see it in day three if you know what you're looking for. A lot of practice. 
is in goose eggs are a little easier. You can I can sometimes tell from day two, um, but day three, um, pretty sure. Um, by day seven, it's completely obvious. I mean, you could be an idiot, and if you have the flashlight and you're looking at the egg, you'll you'll be able to see the veins and the embryo by day seven. Um, so that first egg, you really didn't see much <laughs> for many days, and I, I'm not sure if that's really going to develop. I actually I don't think it's going to develop. In fact, in a few days here, I'll probably take it out of the incubator, and um, you know that'll be the end of that one. Now the four that I have here, what I've been doing is I've been um, saving these up. Um, and when I get about a week and a half worth of eggs, then I'll put them all in the incubator at the same time. That way when they hatch out, they'll all have little friends, you know, to uh, peep at and stuff. Um, that's uh, a disadvantage of putting these in the, the uh, incubator as they hatch. Because when they do hatch, I mean, I'm sorry, as they're laid, putting them in the incubator as they're laid. Because then when they do hatch, they don't have a buddy. And um, when I had a, a single duck that um, hatched out, that guy needed a buddy. So I sort of got, out, got on Craigslist and I found someone that was selling ducklings. And I got a couple so that uh, he had some friends. And that he really liked that. He perked up immediately once he had a little friend. So I'm sure I'm going to be spending a lot of time with this uh, single egg <laughs> that's um, so far ahead of the other ones. Uh, when it hatches, but the other ones should, uh, they'll come along a few days later. Um, <clears throat> now, a goose, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but a goose typically lays an egg every two days, typically. It, it It's, you know, sometimes it's more, more time than that, but, um, so if you look at my, my chart right here, I had e eggs eight and nine, both were laid on the 12th, and six and seven were both laid on the 10th. So I have two uh, hens, and I was able to tell which one came from speckles and which ones came from Tina. And um, now speckles, she was the first one to start laying. So um, you'll notice here the first three eggs were all from speckles. And then on the eighth, yeah, on the eighth here, I have two eggs. Those both came from Tina. And Speckles took the day off. <laughs> so, okay. I guess that's about it. Um, there is another aspect to all this. Um, you want to watch the uh, air sac in the egg. And um, online I found a, a little graphic, a little drawing on where the, how big the air sac should be um, different days throughout the, the incubating process. And, um, I didn't show you that here because that takes, going to take three hands and, uh, I am not blessed with three hands. So, um, but that's something you, you take, just, just take the flashlight and put it on the large end where the air sac is and, uh, you can see it. And then after like, um, on a goose, after 10 days, you then take a, a pencil and you draw the air sac. Go around the outline of the air sac. And, you know, that you're going to need some help with that. Um, unless you've got, unless you're very talented. But, <clears throat> um, and then you can trace that um, air sac. If you notice that, hey, that air sac is uh, disappearing too fast, then you want to up the humidity. If you see that the air sac isn't disappearing very fast, um, you know, then you, you want to decrease the humidity. Now, <clears throat> when I ordered my eggs last year, um, the person I, I uh, bought the eggs from, it took him about a week to gather up a dozen eggs. He had, I think, four or five geese. It took him out of, about a week till he had um, the 12 eggs. And um, then they got sort of lost in the mail in, in, in one of the uh, distribu distribution centers. 
they were down there for like almost a week. It took them, I think, just under a week before I got the eggs. And the thing is, he he didn't live that far from me. I mean, kind of far. It would have been like maybe a six-hour drive. So, you know, far enough where I don't want to drive it. But you would have thought it would have taken a lot less than a week to get to me. So when I got those eggs, <clears throat> the air sac had already developed quite a bit on them, which could have been the problem why I had such a hard time with them hatching out. Um, but I, like, I, I dealt with it, you know. I was there when they were hatching out, so um, I was able to deal with it. Um, so, yeah, you want to keep an eye on the, on the air sac. Um, it was interesting when these eggs... Um, laid or laid by the geese. I brought them in. I checked the air, air air sac first thing, and it was. I was sort of amazed how small it was. Like it was like the size of a dime in diameter. Very very small. And um, <clears throat> when I got the eggs in the mail, they were closer to the size of a quarter. So you know they had lost a lot of humidity in shipping, a lot of moisture out of the egg, but. Um, but they, they, they worked out fine. They, they were fine. I was very impressed. Um, you know, they, they all made the trip. They were all fertile. Um, none of them were, were broken or anything. And they all developed quite, quite nicely. Um, I think that's it. So as you can see, then, this is um, a much more difficult process than just throwing your chicken eggs in an incubator and saying, okay, we're done. No, it's not like that. Not like that at all. You gotta keep an eye on these goose eggs. You know, those mother geese, they're smart. Like geese are very smart. So I'm sure they know what they're doing when it comes to um, hatching out their, their children. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm gonna end this video now. It's already, it looks like 37 minutes, I'm sure. Uh, that, that's going to be a long video to have to watch. Sorry for the, the length, but I wanted to put as much information in as, as I could. Um, a lot of this I'm going to use for my, my own uh, use. Um, I figure, you know, in 20 years I'll probably be in a nursing home and I'll be bored and I'll say, hey, tell my kids, hey, uh, bring me some of those videos I made of the, of the geese, you know, so... Uh, something to look at. I have lots of videos I put on YouTube um, of the, the 10 that I had at hatching and raising and so forth over the past year. So okay, <clears throat> I will um, stop this video and uh, hope you enjoy it. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.